Hi everyone, Bria here from Etched Actuarial and today I'm going to be answering a really really common question that you've actually probably probably been wondering and that is how many questions do you need to get right on exam P or FM in order to pass? And it's actually not really a simple answer. There's a lot of different complexities that go into it and I've dug deep into the SOA's description of how everything is graded and I'm going to put it into easy terms for you to understand so that you know how the exam is going to be scored. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, you probably already know that both exam P and FM are both scored on a range from 0 to 10. You need to get a 6 in order to pass. Now, just so you know, it's actually impossible in some cases to get a 10. Uh, it really is just, it just depends how hard the exam actually is overall for everyone. And for some people, if you, even if you get perfect, you may not get a 10. So if you go into the exam and don't get a 10 and you feel kind of disappointed, just realize that that may have not been possible on your exam. So that's just something to think about. But anyway, you need a 6 in order to pass exam P and FM, but that doesn't mean that you need to get 60% of the questions right. Actually, for both exam P and FM, the pass mark is around 70 to 71%, but still, that doesn't mean that you need to get 70% of the questions right. Like I said, there are some complexities in this calculation. Now, I'm going to go into those, and I hope it makes sense because it's a bit detailed, but I'm, I'm sure you could understand it. Okay, so when they are creating these exams, they actually inclu include pilot questions. And pilot questions are just, uh, they're basically questions that they're trying to test the difficulty of. They want to know if this question is way too difficult for the exam or maybe it's way too easy. Um, and they also want to make sure that there is no, there are no mistakes in the exam, in the exam question. So they put these pilot questions into your exam and everyone else's exam and basically it just helps them understand how good the question is. So they put these pilot questions into everyone's exam. They don't tell how many they are and they don't tell you which questions are pilot questions but that means that you're going to be spending the same amount of time on those questions as you would for any others. They don't want you to spend less time on questions that are pilot questions because I, I didn't mention but pilot questions aren't included in your in your score. But what makes it difficult is that we have no idea how many pilot questions will be on your exam and we also don't know which questions will be our pilot questions. They want you to treat them fairly and just like you would for any other question so they don't tell you that information. So why does this matter? Well, when they are grading your exam, they're not going to include those. So we don't know if your exam is really out of 30 questions, which would mean there are no pilot questions, or maybe they've included three pilot questions, so your exam is really out of 27. So that can make a big difference in your score. Let's say you get all three of those pilot questions right. Well, none of them are going to actually go towards your score. If you get them all wrong, still, none of them will go. So we can't really say specifically how many questions you need to get right because we don't know how many questions actually count. Okay, that's the first reason why it, it gets complex, but here's the second reason. When the SOA creates exams, the, the CBT or the computer-based testing exams, they actually create several different sets of questions and that's just so everyone doesn't get the same exact set of questions but there will be people that do get the same set so I'm not sure how many different sets they create maybe it's five maybe it's ten maybe it's fifty who knows but the point is all of these different sets are going to be a slightly different difficulty level so what that means for you is that if you get a really easy set of questions relative to all the others, that your pass mark is going to be higher. And that means you need to get more questions right than someone that got a more difficult set of questions. So obviously this makes it also difficult to determine how many questions you actually need to get right on exam day uh, to pass. So I know I've thrown a lot of information at you, 
but I want to make it clear that we can't say for 100% sure how many questions you need to get right to pass. But I think that you can almost guarantee that you'll pass if you're able to get about 23 to 24 on exam P or 27 to 28 on exam FM. So th 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 those are just my estimates. Don't take them like don't take them too seriously. Do as be best as you can, but those are my thoughts. Anyway, that's how exam P is scored. There are lots of different complexities that go into it. Uh, yeah, so if you want help passing exam P or FM so that you can get those high scores on your practice exams and you're fully prepared by exam day, check out my study strategy program where I'll work with you throughout your entire study period to make sure that you're super well prepared by exam day. See you in the next video. Bye!